In the previous section, we've introduced the idea of rich regression, and now we're moving to lasso regression. And with this, we're coming back to the problem of variable selection. I'm going to use the same data set uh, that we've been using for this uh, module, the FAT data set. And here we have um, several anthropometric, anthropometric measurements to predict, predict uh, percent of body fat that is given by the, the, the variable Brozac. So as in the previous sections as well, I'm going to focus on the linear model, although uh, the reasoning that we're doing here can be extended to generalized linear model. And we've seen that for the linear model, the ordinary least squares uh, estimates for the beta parameters is the best linear unbiased estimator. And it's obtained by minimizing the, the residual sum of squares given by this expression here, or by maximizing the likelihood so the maximum likelihood uh, um, for the regression parameters in the linear model and the um, uh, ordinarily squares is, are exactly the same. We also saw uh, in when you talked about ridge regression that uh, the ridge estimator may improve uh, the mean square error of an estimator by trading bias for variance. And this is achieved by adding this penalization term uh, to the uh, residual sum of squares this penalization term, which is a function of the beta squares, so the squares of the parameters, the regression parameters. So the ridge estimator is particularly useful when the ordinarily square estimator is unstable. For example, in situations where there's a lot of collinearity in the data, when the covariates um, have, are strongly correlated, this will create a lot of instability in the ordinary squares estimate that will be translated in high variance or high standard errors. And in this case, the ridge estimator can actually be a better option because uh, by allowing a little bit of bias in the estimate, it decreases or it may decrease substantially the amount of uh, variability. But as we have seen, the ridge regression does not perform variable selection. What do I mean by this? Well, the idea of the ridge is expressed in, uh, in this uh, figure on the right side of the, the slide. And here uh, we have two parameters, beta 1 and beta 2, and the likelihood function. And uh, usually estimation uh, based on the likelihood is really to find the maximum of the likelihood fun function that is represented here by uh, the beta hat. What we do in the, in the ridge uh, estimation process is that we, est we maximize the likelihood, but subject to a constraint on the size of the betas. Um, so the, the constraint that we, that we are, the penalization that parameter that we're putting in the residual, residual sum of squares, it's equivalent to saying that the sum of the squares of beta have to be within this circle. Okay, so we have to find the maximum of likelihood while maintaining the estimates within this circle. And as you can see here, there is no way where uh, beta um, 1 or beta 2 will actually be exactly zero because of this, this smooth uh, border of this constraint, which is a circle. So if I allow a different type of constraint, uh, let's say, for example, this region here, now, given that I have these uh, vertices, um, there's, there are solutions where actually beta 1 or beta 2 can uh, be exactly 0. And this type of uh, restriction is what it's called the lasso regression, the least absolute shrinkage and selection operators. Quite a complicated name for this, uh, this method. Uh, and in terms of penalization, uh, this is similar to the ridge regression, but instead of having a penalization uh, with the sum of the beta squares, I now have a penalization that is the sum of the modules of the regression parameters. And this, again, is equivalent having a restriction that of a shape of this diamond. So contrary to the ridge regression, the L1 penalization the lasso penalization allows some coefficients to be to shrunk exactly to zero. Okay, so I can always increase or decrease this area in a way that I can actually get um, uh, some of the the betas to be exactly um, uh, zero. Um, and if I estimate the, the one of these betas to be zero, this corresponds basically to removing the variable from the the model. Also, like the ridge, the lasso trades bias for the variance. 
but in this case there is this embedded variable selection procedure exactly because some of the coefficients can be shrunk exactly towards zero. The amount of penalization is again uh, chosen or can be again chosen by cross-validation as we did with, with reach and in the case of the data set um, or the FAT data set where we want to, ask to predict Brozek with all these covariates we can see that the chosen um, the chosen penalization by cross-validation is again small and I can also represent the paths uh, of the, the coefficients uh, for the lasso penalization so meaning that if the, the penalization is very small I'll have pretty much the solution of the ordinary least squares so I'm not penalizing so the expression is pretty much the residual the expression that I'm minimizing is pretty much the residual sum of squares. But uh, when I start uh, adding some penalization, you can see that the, the coefficients start to shrink towards zero. And if I penalize a lot, actually all coefficients become exactly zero. If you recall from the ridge regression, the coefficients also shrunk, but they never uh, reach zero. In this case, they will reach exactly zero, and that's why there's a selection, a variable selection procedure. So uh, when we fit the, the previous model with lasso, uh, we have several uh, per, uh, coefficients associated with, with several covariates that are shrunk exactly to zero. In particular, adipose, chest, and knee, uh, as you can see in the result, the coefficient of the, 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 the variables are is exactly zero. And again, this is different from reach, where um, the, the coefficients will never reach uh, zero. So I'm going to spend now the next few minutes talking about some extensions of lasso. We're not going to cover this in depth here in this unit, but I think it's important at least to mention them. So the first one is group lasso. And group lasso is used for situations where we want to uh, either include a set of uh, 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 predictors in the in the model or remove them altogether from the model. Okay, so I, we want to penalize in a way that either uh, that subset of of predictors is included or removed from the model. Uh, this is, for example, the case when we have a categorical predictor and we create we need to create uh, dummy variables to use the variable in the model. And in this case, I, uh, I want to either include all the dummies in the model or remove all the dummies in the model. And there's a way of writing the, penal the lasso penalization in a way that either that subset of uh, co covariates is either included or, exclu or excluded from the model. Another example would be, for example, in a, uh, if we have an interaction, we might want to force the uh, main effects to be in the model if the interaction is included. As I said, we're not going to extend much uh, the, the group lasso, but for practical purpose, I thought it was imp important to give you an idea about the existence of this method. So another method uh, that it's, it's based on the on lasso, but also on reach, tries to combine the good properties of reach and lasso estimator. Okay, and this is called the elastic nets. And the elastic nets basically introduces both penalizations, uh, lasso penalization and also uh, a reach penalization. Okay, and now I have two parameters that control the penalization. So the amount of overall penalization and another parameter that uh, um, uh, weights how much of the penalization comes from the last the, from the reach penalization and how much comes from the lasso okay so you can see that this parameter alpha controls that amount of penalization so if alpha is zero this part of the the the, the expression disappears so i just have the usual reach penalty if uh, alpha is one now it's the reach penalization part that disappears so i just have the lasso and in the middle i have a combination of both so geometrically, this uh, corresponds of having uh, um, shapes between the diamond, which is the, the, the lasso, and the circle, which is the ridge. Okay? So I have uh, these, these shapes that they still have uh, vertices in the axis, uh, but they are smooth uh, 
um, uh, but they have smooth borders otherwise. And I'm going now to show you the elastic nets applied to the example that we've been using, the FAT dataset. And here you can compare the, the coefficients estimated by elastic nets with lasso and ridge only. Okay, just a few notes about the code. I'm still using the, the package GLM net, uh, but I'm going to implement the GLM net with the, the carrot. Carrot, as I might have uh, said in previous videos, is a wrapper, so it uses different uh, packages, but tries to uh, make the, the syntax uniform across the packages. So basically I have to define the, the train control, um, uh, which defines things as you know the type of cross validation that I'm doing and then the train which defines the methods and applies the train control parameters that you defined before okay and you can see here when I uh, write the the model then I specify that I want to use the GLM net now with the elastic nets as I said there's two parameters that control the penalization the alpha and the lambda so I'm going to choose both parameters by cross-validation. So I have to uh, uh, search over a grid of combinations of different uh, alphas and lambdas. And this is what this expand grid function is doing. It's creating all the, com all the, the combinations between this sequence of values of possible values for alpha and this sequence of possible values for lambda. Uh, and uh, by cross-validation, we test all those all those uh, combinations of those parameters and then we choose the best the best uh, uh, alpha and the best lambda and this concludes the lasso section and also the regularization module